Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel dedicated to playing Dungeons and Dragons, in particular basic D&D, solo. And in this video series, we have been working out a way to do that and developing a system so that we can um, enjoy playing the game without the need for any other players or a dungeon master in particular. Uh, so this is the, the third video in the series. Um, in the first video we discussed the different rule sets and which rule set we um, might use and we decided to go with um, the Frank Mentzer Basic D&D, also known as BECMI, Basic Expert, Companion, Master and Immortals, I think is the last one. Um, so we went with those rules, then we um, briefly talked about what kind of stationery and equipment we'll need in order to play the game, uh, you know, in an old school style rather than using digital tools. Um, and then we went on to create our first character using the um, Mensa basic D&D rules and we created a elf. Um, in this video, we're gonna start getting into actually playing the game uh, using um, the Solo Dungeon Adventures article written in the spring of 1975 by Gary Gygax himself. Um, you know, arguably that article produced the world's first um, procedurally generated kind of um, roguelike dungeon crawler and we're going to be implementing the uh, the rules and the tables in that article and we're going to begin to um, form the basis of how we might play our game um, so this is a, just going to be a basic overview um, it's going to include the generation of just a, a couple of rooms and we'll talk about things like ta tracking time and I'll give a few examples of dice rolls and things like that. Um, but as this series develops, you know, we'll keep kind of chipping away at it uh, until it kind of increases in complexity and becomes more balanced. Um, but yeah, um, we're not there yet, but we're getting there slowly but surely, video by video. So I hope you get something out of this video and you enjoy it um, and I just want to say thanks for watching I really appreciate it so I've taken out my um, spiral notebook and what I've done is I've gone through the uh, solo dungeon adventures that I introduced uh, in the first episode uh, that was written by Gary Gygax in Strategic Review magazine said we were going to be using that as a tool to, to actually generate our dungeons randomly. So what I've done is I've transferred all the tables that was that was in that article and I've put them in my notebook for easy reference because basically the way I'm going to use the notebook is I'm, all, all the random tables that we're going to use to help generate our dungeons and our wilderness and other things like that I'm going to keep them all in this in this notebook so I can easily reference it and and roll on these tables um, obviously you can just print out the actual strategic review article if you want to and what I would recommend if you do that is maybe getting a, a, a ring binder or something like that and actually compiling all these things into one concise folder so that you can reference them nice and easy but yeah that's how i'm going to be how i'm going to be doing it going forward we've got our basic setup we've got our dice our character sheet and we have our random random tables for a means of generating the dungeon and we have graph paper so 
we've got a basic solo RPG system. At the moment, it is a basic dungeon crawler. But as we progress through the campaign, we're going to keep adding layers on top of it and putting more depth, more detail, more rich backstory. But at the moment, we're going to basically... We're going to start generating a random dungeon and get right into the the very basics of, of how we play, the very, very root of the game. So on a piece of graph paper, always start in the, the very center. And the first thing we will generate in the very center of the, of, of the paper will be the, will be a room. And that room will contain a set of stairs that basically our character has descended in d into the dungeon down the stairs from the wilderness above. Um, so we'll just you know, roughly mark the center of the graph paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. Also, it goes without saying, but I'll mention it anyway. Um, you also want to make sure you've got a copy of the rules at hand. So, you know, as I'm I'm showing this using the um, Mensa Basic Rules, the BE CMI rule system. Um, so I've got a copy of the player's manual and the DM's rules. Um, I've got them in PDF form. I've got them on my laptop and on my uh, smartphone as well. So I can easily reference the rules as we play the game. And as mentioned in previous videos, um, I'll put links in the description for this video to the PDFs, uh, to the PDF versions of those rule books that are available through the Dungeon Masters Guild. Before we roll a room, we need to decide on a, uh, a scale to use on our graph paper when drawing the dungeon. Now, the normal scale is usually for every square, for every small square, that would represent a 10 foot by 10 foot space. However, because our graph paper, our squares are only two millimeters each, so they're very tiny. So I'm going to opt for each square on my graph paper will represent a five by five foot area. So essentially 10 feet would be four of these squares. So I'm going to bring up table five of the solo dungeon adventures and I'm going to roll my first room of the dungeon using a 12 sided dice. And got a two. Two to four is a square 20 times 20 room. I pulled out a bit of scrap paper here just to make it easier. So we've written down square 20 foot by 20 foot room. Next, we're going to roll a six sided die to see how many exits are in the room. So we've rolled a three. So on a roll of three, up to 600 feet, we have three exits. So we've got a square, 20 times 20 foot room with three exits. The next thing we do is we roll a D12 to find out the direction and location of each exit. So we got a five. So we've got an exit on the opposite wall. Seven, one on the left wall. And another seven. So we've got a third exit on the left wall. Scrap paper, we've got one exit on the opposite wall, one on the left wall, and another one on the left wall. Next, we want to roll for the contents of the chamber. So we need a D20 for that. 
A natural 20 on the first D20 roll. So that gives us some treasure. So for D100, we roll the tens and the digits dice. And we get 75, which is 250 gold pieces. So there we have it. We've got our first room of the dungeon. We descend down the steps into a 20 foot by 20 foot square room. We can see a door opposite the way we came in. And we can see two doors on the left wall. And in the room, we can see gold glittering, 250 gold pieces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is light a torch because my elf Tyrell he has infravision which means he can he can see up to 60 feet in the dark but he can only see kind of patches of heat so um, it would be more effective for him to actually light a torch so he can see properly so I'm going to light a torch so I've got six torches on my character sheet. So I light one of my torches using my tinder box, which has flint, steel, dry wood, shavings and twigs. So I use that to light my torch, which will burn for six turns, which is an hour. So we will also need to track time. I'm also going to pick up the um, 250 gold pieces and so we add them to the character sheet and now we've got 250 gold pieces so we're in the first room and we're already making profit. So I've decided that I'm going to go north. So I'm going to try and force open the door to the north. So I need to roll a 5 or a 6 on a 6 sided die to successfully force open the door. And I did it straight away. Next I'm going to determine the space beyond the door by rolling a 12-sided die. And I got a one. So that means that beyond the door to the north is a parallel passage or a 10 foot by 10 foot room the door is straight ahead and the door is indeed straight ahead so I have rolled a 10 foot by 10 foot room. So I have forced open the door to the north and entered a 10 foot by 10 foot room and that room is empty that um, there's no exits in it but I did roll um, that treasure, treasure was in the room and I rolled on the treasure table and I received um, a result of magic. So I'm now going to roll on a magic table. So the um, solo dungeon adventures tables indicate when you, when you get a result of magic on the treasure table, it asks you to then roll on the magic tables in the original D, &D books um, to find out which magic item you've discovered. However, we're going to change that rule because we're playing basic D and D. So instead of rolling on the D, &D magic table, we're going to roll on the magic tables in the um, basic D and D. Um, Dungeon Masters um, booklet and what I've done is I've copied the first table we need to roll on into our notebook just so we've got all our tables in the same place um, and I'm going to roll on this table and this will tell me which magic sub table to use to discover which item we found in this 10 foot by 10 foot room so I'm going to roll um, my percentile dice so I got 81 
uh, and we can see 66 to 85 is scrolls. So I have found a magic scroll. So now I need to um, roll on the scroll table. So I've added all the um, sub magic tables to my notebook. And I'm going to roll on table E for scrolls to find out what type of magic scroll I have found in this small room. I'm going to roll a 20 sided dice to do that. I got a 15, which means I got a scroll of protection from undead and that, that might come in handy. So I have, I've added that to my character sheet. So my character Tyrell has picked up the um, scroll, the magic scroll in this, um, this little room here. Um, next thing I'm going to do, because there's no exits in this room, I can roll to see if I can find a secret door. Um, now for every 10 foot of wall space um, searched, it takes about a round. So I'm going to start on the uh, left hand side uh, of the wall and I'm going to look to see if I can find a secret door. So I roll d6 and I got a three, so that's a fail. I can uh, find a door on a roll of one or two because I'm an elf. Um, so one round has passed and I have not found a secret door. So as you can see on my scrap paper, I am keeping track of time, but this is something I'm gonna develop. I'm just doing it on scrap paper at the moment, tracking rounds and turns and uh, events like lighting a torch and when that torch is gonna burn out. But I'm gonna develop this into a, a kind of um, time tracker sheet or an adventure sheet that um, can be used in conjunction with this solo role playing system um, that basically just kind of tracks the time and that'll incorporate, you know, every two turns in the dungeon a roll will be made to see if a wandering monster appears um movement will be um tracked so our character at the moment is moved about 25 feet okay he can move 220 feet per turn so obviously um that'll need to be taken into account so i'm just kind of keeping roughly keeping track of rounds and turns at the moment as best I can and as accurately as I can, but this is something that I'll um, I'll develop as this um, series continues. So we now have a basic example of how this solo system works and how we get to discover the world and explore it piece by piece. We've only just begun our adventure and discovered a couple of rooms, but in the next video, I'm gonna explore further, generate more of the dungeon and further develop a system for tracking time in the dungeon. But what we have so far is the basis for a solo dungeon crawl. But as I build up the solo system, more tools and rules will be implemented to create a good balanced play experience. So I hope you keep watching this video series and cheers for checking it out and watching the videos so far. I'll see you next time.